Hello and welcome to episode 17 in our JRPG series. In this episode we're going to fix a little thing with the rotation of characters moment uh, and then we're going to go on to doing the damage numbers and how to make them appear above the enemies when we do damage to them. So let's jump straight in and get started. So before we get started with the damage numbers uh, we're going to fix uh, a little thing with the rotation of the characters. So you may have noticed in previous videos and I'll show you again now that when the character runs up they sort of snap turn into their rotation and the reason why that's the case is because they're inheriting the rotation straight from the uh, the actor's rotation so if I push attack here he attacks him he'll run back and he'll sort of snap to that position you see that snap happen there and you'll happen again there it's more noticeable with the spiders um, so again when they come back to their spot they'll snap turn like that so we're gonna make it a bit more fluid a bit more easy to on the eyes so the main crux of this is on the unit base we need to tell the control the character to not inherit the controller rotation your we're going to turn that off and instead we're going to go to the character movement component and scroll down to the rotation settings and we're going to turn on use controller desired rotation now that may sound like the same thing but the difference is is that when it's on the character movement component it uses a rate to change it over time and this is that rate here 360 degrees per second so I can keep this 360 or change it up and down as much as I want I'm going to leave mine at 360 for now um, I'm quite happy with that so alongside that we have to also change the way they rotate now this was using the controller desired rotation so we can't just do set actor rotation because that's just going to snap turn it still so if we go back to our combat component and look at where we are doing the changes in a rotation on the event graph and the rotation is changing here at the end of the attacks so on this actor rotation we're going to remove this and instead we're going to take the unit character here with the AI controller get AI controller <clears throat> And then from there we're going to do set focus and the focus is going to be set here to be on their unit target so take unit target put that in here and then I'm going to make him uh, when they finish their turn to clear their focus so on end turn we'll go to end unit turn we'll get their unit character get the AI controller and clear focus now stop them looking at their rotation this forces the AI controller to try and turn to look at a target in this case an actor so on the event graph we've got this happening on here so I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go to the other character, uh, the other actions here as well. So on this one, this way, success, and like so. And what this means is that when they finish their turn, they'll go back and turn to face who they just hit. So again, on over here, on the magic side, got this going on there. Okay, so now if I were to test this out, we should see our characters smoothly turn towards their target um, rotation. So wait for the character to start, and I'll hit attack the first one. So notice that smoother turn that Greystone had turning to his target, and our spiders will do the same. okay it's not going to be perfect because the spider doesn't have the animation to do the turning but ultimately you'd uh, have the spider do the animation as well for turning as well but there we go it's a lot smoother looks a little nicer and we can now carry on so prior to starting this episode i have also gone in and added the actors um the montages for the other characters so they too can do their attacks so i've added gideon and giving them more spells as well 
So if I go and I'm going to give him faster um, stat modifier for haste, changes to like 100, and we'll go to Fey and give her the default modifier of uh, 85. With the haste modifier usually will not be quite high unlike the others which would be like in and around one um, but haste would be different uh, and greystone will do as well um, so we get to see them attack first so go here and haste will do um, 100 and I'll do 105 something like that okay so if I push play now I can show you the other animations and magic effects I've done as well and it's exactly the same setup as I did for Greystone, just with the other characters. So Greystone uh, updated the uh, fire spell with some other uh, a different uh, choice for the particle effect, but on that, it's exactly the same. Uh, Gideon, you can see he's one here. I'll do frost, and you see frost happen. And Fay, I'll show you the thunder. Okay, and there we have it. So I've also added those into it too. So now I want to show a damage number on the screen when we know how much damage we've been dealt. So we're going to create the widget for this. So we're going to go to UI widgets and create a new widget blueprint, and this would be the damage number displayed like that and open this up now inside this widget you can be using the canvas panel and a text node so drag in some text and i'm just going to bring this down a little bit so this text we're going to set up some uh how it's going to appear um the first thing i'm going to change is the uh the font and its size and color so i change the font here to quicksand font and make this uh, bold okay and I want in the um, alignment here in the top for the slot to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and I want also the justification here to be centered I'm going to change the color of this to also red because it is damage after all like so um and i think that'll do for this maybe change the size a little bit we'll change it up to 30 maybe no actually i'll keep it 24. um okay and that's that so this text block i'm going to name up here damage number text and tick is variable we're also going to have an animation to this thing so add new animation and this would be damage fade And we have selected, you choose add track and choose the damage number text. We're going to add the transform for this. <clears throat> and we're going to make him rise up. So I'm going to add a key at start and go to about one second long. And I'm going to add another key. And on the translation here, I'm going to change the Y to be minus 100. So over one second, he rises up like this. Next, I'm going to go down to scale and I'm going to go a little bit, one, one frame forward, go to scale and increase these to 1.5 1 and 1.5. And then I'm going to go two frames in front of that and take them back down to one. So you get this sort of like little pulse of the text being appearing. Do it again. Okay. And I might bring the translation Y a little bit forward so it doesn't really start rising until after it's popped on the screen a little bit. Okay. So next I'm going to make it change its opacity as well. So I'm going to go add track 
to render opacity and on here add a key and on this last key here I'm going to drag this down here and let's set that to zero I'm going to drag the front key as well a bit forward so it doesn't start fading out until well into the animation okay hit compile and save that and I think that'll do for this now what else I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the graph and set up the code that's going to dictate where this goes on the screen so obviously don't want it in the corner so on the pre-construct we need to set up the number first of all so add new variable and this will be damage amount and that will be a float and on the pre-construct drag out your damage number text get and then set text plug in that into there and the damage amount will go into the in text there and open this up I'm just going to make sure I clip off the end so it has no decimals so I'm going to change that to zero for maximum fractional digits okay next we will need to change its position so for this we need to know who is this one belonging to so you make a new variable and this would be the uh, damage target and this will be the type of unit base and it'd be an object reference I'm going to drag this out and choose get and then I'm going to right click somewhere and say location in widget uh, where was it location or it, maybe it's on widget yep there you go so project world location to widget position so you drag this in and the world location is going to be the damage targets actor location so get actor location and put that in there the player controller is going to be get player controller and that's used so we know who uh, whose screen is it going on basically and the world project location is going to give us a screen position and we can use that to change the location of our damage number text so get that out and it's part of a canvas slot so we can do slot as canvas slot and then from there I'm going to set position into it like so then on the uh, we're going to make the construct event we're going to tell it to play the animation when it's constructed so bring this in and do play animation forward So it plays animation as soon as it's added to the screen. Now I want to remove it when the animation is finished. So if I just search for animation finished, and you'll see the one with the brackets with your animation name in it. With this, we're going to take this out and do remove from parent. And that's it. Hit compile and save that. Now for this to work, we need to have our unit uh, target and the damage amount be editable and exposed on spawn so let's do that editable and exposed on spawn for both of those Hit compile and save I then want to go to my unit base so let's open up the unit base and in unit base you're looking at your any damage event at the end of this we want to do a create widget and we're going to choose our damage number widget and you'll see it's asking for a damage amount and the damage target the damage amount is going to come from our calculate damage resistance and then our damage target is going to be self we then want to add this one to the screen add to viewport and that's now done so let's test this out and see how this looks So go to attack and the spider will add that damage number to the screen and it came up there a bit small maybe might have to make it a bit bigger we'll check it one more time there you go so make that a little bit bigger and we'll call it a day there
and set that to let's say 30 compile and save do one little test so that looks nil attack and there we go you can see a number come up and that'll do it that brings us to the end of the episode i want to say a massive thank you to everyone watching in the next part we're going to go over and talk about white magic and how to get that white magic to heal you uh for your damage you've taken so join us on the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan daily we can catch all my episodes early before anyone else i say a massive thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for their continued support make sure you're subscribed and i'll see you next time bye everyone